so as you know that uh, out of the 70 marks electrostatics has a weightage of 8 marks so it's very very important right so the domain of electrostatics basically is divided into three verticals okay it is divided into three verticals which are field yahans raj guru then we have potential and finally we have capacitance so the domain of gauss's law is covered somewhere over here right so these are the three basic verticals on which the domain of electrostatics is covered and i would like to reiterate that the weightage of electrostatics is 8 out of 7 now that you are all set, what you need to understand is that uh, whether we talk about electrostatics or we talk about electric current, in both these cases, we are fundamentally speaking about charge. Right? So the basic difference between electrostatics and current electricity is that in case of electrostatics, we study about static charges. Right? That is charges which are not free to move. Whereas in case of current electricity, we talk about charges in motion, right? So what exactly is electric charge? Electric charge is an intrinsic of the elementary particles of matter, which is responsible for generation of electric forces in objects, right? So now let us talk about a very, very fundamental topic that has lot of weightage in examination. And that topic is property of charge. So guys, are you all set? Guys, are you all set? Cool. So now let us talk about the property of charges. So basically when you talk about the properties of electric charges, there are three properties that comes into picture. So it is additivity, the second property is conservation and the third property is quantization. So every year, some question is basically directly or indirectly related to these three properties, right? So let us study about these three properties in a bit of detail. So let's start with additivity. So guys, tell me, is charge a scalar quantity or is it a vector quantity? Is charge a scalar quantity or a vector quantity? Okay, so... Uh, very good, very good everyone, very good. It appears that you have done your groundwork and you are ready for, for your examinations. So charge is a scalar quantity and as all scalar quantities, what you need to understand is that charge will be added according to the laws of ordinary algebra. That is if I have to determine the net charge on a system, right? the net charge on a system will be the algebraic sum of all of the charges. right? algebraic sum of individual charges right so let us take an example and understand this right so we have a system and we have charges like plus 5 coulomb and then we have charges like minus 3 then plus 2 coulomb and let us say minus 4 coulomb okay so in this case if i have to find the net charge Okay, the net charge will be 5 plus 2 that is 7 coulomb minus 7 coulomb which is equal to 0. It means the body is uncharged. That is, though there are individual charges, but if you take the overall effect, the overall effect is that the body is uncharged. So that was about net charge. That is, is the net charge on any object is the summation of the individual charges which are present and when I am talking about summation, I am talking about algebraics. Now, let us talk about the second principle which is, is called conservation of charge. So actually there are two postulates in conservation of charge. So the first postulate is that charge of an ice it means a system which to interact or which does not act with its surrounding, right? So that is the first postulate and second postulate is very similar to law of conservation of energy that is charges can neither be created nor be destroyed they can only be transferred from one object to the other object. So we have 
discussed about relativity of charges we have discussed about relation of charges so what comes next that is what comes next it's the quantization of as, as you know that uh, this section is especially very very important right so if we are talking about the the net is on any system so do you think that system can take any possible values ankit what do you think apart from ankit hansraj says yes what about others what do you think can it take any specific value or it has a recessive kind of approach so i have both varsha is also going with a yes okay this is mridula rashi is saying restricted okay Any is quantized. That is, it only okay. Okay, Rishab. Point noted. I'll come to that. So, charge on any body can take only specific values. So, let me actually give you the quantization equation, and then we will discuss about that in detail. So, the basic equation that governs the amount of charge with an object is Q is equal to n n b, where Q is the net charge, right? what is n n is any integer okay and e is the basic unit of charge so if i talk in terms of magnitude in that case e is the electronic charge right so the value of electronic charge guys what is the value of electronic charge guys what is the value of electronic charge come on people what is the value of electronic charge it is 1.6 into 10 to the power 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs brother it's 1.6 right see uh, hansraj what i would like to say is that n is integer so when i am saying integer integers can be positive or negative right the only thing is it can neither be a fraction it cannot be a fraction it can be zero okay So it can either be positive, it can either be negative. So if you are talking about positive, say n can either be positive or negative, right? So if it is positive, you are basically talking about positive charges, and if it's negative, you are basically talking about the negative charges, right? So the essence is charge on any object can take certain specified values which are given by the integral multiple of electronic charge. There is an interesting thing that I would like to present over here is that the concept of charges okay medulla point noted so the basic concept that i would like to illustrate over here is that the nomenclature of charge it's a kind of arbitrary right what you need to understand is that if i say that i have a positive 5 coulomb charge and i have a negative 5 coulomb charge so guys do you think that there is a difference in magnitude see normally plus 5 is greater than minus 5 so if i take a plus 5 coulomb charge it should be literally greater than minus 5 coulomb charge right So what do you guys think? Is there a perspective of magnitude over here? Okay, Ankit. What about others? Do you guys think that you know, plus five coulomb charge is greater than a minus five coulomb charge? Okay, Ankit. What about others? Do you think that there is a okay, okay, cool. So all of you have this concept clear. So the basic point is a plus five coulomb charge is not greater than minus five coulomb charge. They only differ in terms of effect that they produce, right? Okay. The point is these terms, positive and negative, have been arbitrarily coined by Benjamin Franklin, and we are literally following that following that convention up to this day, right? So this was the basic concept about the properties of charge. Any doubt, anyone up to this? Please ask. any doubts anyone okay i'm okay. good what about others any doubts anyone okay cool because this is very really elementary you have already studied this in detail right so let us take discussion forward okay now let us talk about electrification right so when we talk about electrification we are basically focused on charging right and when i'm talking about charging in general 
positive and negative that declares interaction among charges. See, uh, Rishabh, what I would like to say is that, uh, you know, yeah, I would like to answer that question. The point is, in case of electricity or electrostatics, we have the concept of monopoles, right? Okay. So, you can have a monopole or you have an individual existence of negative charges and positive charges. However, if you correlate this concept with the concept of magnetism, there we don't have the concept of monopoles. That is the reason, however small is the size of the magnet, you have individual, you know, north pole and south pole in that specific species, right? Okay. So, I hope this is clear, right? Because if you are talking about a specific charge, in that case, there is a particular value of field that is going to be associated to that charge, right? Rishabh, are you clear with that? Okay. 